There's a man who's really fighting for his cup medal. Could he score the winning goal now? Once again, match of the day sets out on the road to Wembley. Tonight it's chapter one, the first round proper of the FA Cup. The final chapter, of course, unfolds at Wembley in May. This is Nickel looking for McMahon. Good through ball. He got away from Ratcliffe. Oh, and John Org is in a great position. And Liverpool have scored in their first attack. Watson heads it forward to Cotty. Sharp. Chances here. Nevin. And outside him a chance too, and Gorilla, and it's got in. Nickel. Oh, there's Rush in there. Rush! Goal! Ian Rush. Liverpool back in front. Ratcliffe. Watson's up. Here's McCall again. Oh, yes! It's 2 2. McMahon. Barnes. Rush! Goal! 3-2 Liverpool! Currently sitting proudly at Anfield, the FA Cup is probably the most famous football trophy in the world. It has a pedigree, a history beyond compare. It's been around. 36 years ago, this man played a momentous part in winning it. Stanley Matthews. The Cup had found its way to Blackpool for the first and only time. The nation's premier holiday town could boast football's premier trophy and one of the greatest players of all time. In that 1953 final, Blackpool had been 3-1 down to Bolton with just over 20 minutes left for play. Look at the speed of that man, and they say he's slow. It's Stanley Mortensen. By our watch, two and a half minutes to go, Bolton three, Blackpool two. And of course, we make it about four minutes extra time has to be played, but we can't guarantee that Mortensen going to take it. Yes, there he is, Mortensen. It's a lovely goal! Who's really fighting for his cup medal? Could he score the winning goal now himself? Is there Perry? Perry? What a final! There's the man, Matthews. At long last, he's done it. They call it my my final. I don't believe that. Uh, there was ten other players. And I think Morty should uh, get a lot of credit for the fourth goal. Mortensen indeed had a terrific match and remains the only player ever to score an FA Cup final hat-trick at Wembley. Another great England centre forward, Nat Lofthouse, was playing for Bolton and had scored the first goal of the game. And today, as Blackpool and Bolton, now third division clubs, met in the cup first round, the teams were led out by those two great stars of former years. Sutton United caused the cup's biggest upset last year, beating first division Coventry. Here's Dawson. Oh, and driven in! And number 11, Matthew Hanlon, followed that in. And Sutton have done it again from a corner kick. Sutton were on the cup trail again today against Torquay. And we see the man who was the leading scorer in the competition last year, Kettering's Robbie Cook. Moss Cook. It's 2 1. Partnership up front, working to perfection. Robbie Cook's 
second goal of the match. Well, Kettering face near neighbours Northampton today. We're also featuring Macclesfield against Chester, and we have the other main stories too. And once again, as we set out on the cup trail, Jimmy here, who was actually at the 53 final, will bring all his football experience to our new series. Right, Jim? OK, let's begin at Bloomfield Road. Blackpool against Bolton. A good old Lancashire hot pot for John Motson. Stan Mordenson is 68 now. Nat Lofthouse is 64. But as they lead out the teams, it's a symbolic reference to 1953, the year the cup came to Blackpool. Lots of nostalgia around the ground here at Bloomfield Road. Let's check now at the team lineups in 1989. Blackpool have goalkeeper Steve McElhaghy back after a bad facial injury. In front of him, skipper Sean Elliott is the former England B international, while number nine Gary Brook makes his Blackpool debut. Manager Jimmy Mullen has just signed him from Scarborough, but he's without the experienced Gary Briggs who failed a fitness test this morning. Bolton's manager Phil Neal, the former Liverpool and England fullback, gave fitness tests to two players earlier today. Number eight Steve Thompson and number nine David Reeves both came through OK, and this Bolton team have lost only twice in the league since last March. Well, in that famous final of coronation year, the prices at Wembley were very different to today. Three and sixpence to get in. We make that about 17 and a half pence in the new money. And how appropriate on this day that the number seven shirt for Blackpool should be worn by a man called Matthews. He's Neil Matthews, and he'll be playing on the right-hand side. And away go Blackpool in their tangerine shirts and white shorts. Morgan forward straight away the fullback. And here's Andy Garner, number 10. Bolton in white and blue, which, of course, the same colours as in the 53 final. And the goalkeeper, McElhaghy, who had 50 stitches in his face after a horrific training ground accident only three weeks ago. And the Bolton keeper, David Felgate, a full international for Wales. <laughs> Phyllis Kirk, number 10. This is Matthews, offside. They're getting caught up there, Madden and Brook, by the Bolton back line. Gary Brook, who uh, was involved as a substitute when Scarborough beat Chelsea in the Littlewoods Cup a few weeks ago, just signed in time to play today. Free kick, Methvin penalised for the challenge on Phyllis Kirk. Now, number two, Brown, and number eight, Thompson, have both been uh, dangerous from this sort of position this season for Bolton. And Thompson plays it to Comstiff. Hits the legs. There's a late challenge there after Colin Methvin had released the ball. Uh, Julian Darby penalised. Free kick to Blackpool. Win Stanley, didn't make it, Madden. That was a good effort from a player whose goal-scoring record in the lower divisions was uh, quite considerable at Bury, Craig Madden. He had a short spell up at West Brom. And on this occasion, Sean Elliott plays the free kick in deep. And as they looked towards the linesman, there was no flag on this occasion. And Madden didn't take long to get the volley in there. This is Henshaw. Morgan. And the touch was by Brook to Ayres. Madden's pulling away here. Cowdrill got a head to it. It's a corner to Blackpool. And that's the signal for Elliot and Methvin to make their way forward. Six and five. 
danger here, but uh, Felgate came out with some determination. It was back in by Matthews, who's there again. This is Garner, now Morgan. And this is Madden, and Brooks in the middle, and so is Morgan. But the cross made the goalkeeper feel comfortable. Craig Madden really needed to pull that back a bit because he had two players coming in. Cowdrill. Henshaw for Bolton. That was Garner. And this is Brook. Now Coughlin. Matthew is out right. Garner. Garner's shot. And the best effort of the half from the former Derby County striker, now playing in midfield, Andy Garner. Left footed player, and he uh, turned against Julian Derby here and was hoping to pull that one inside the far post. Wasn't far away. Garner had a good first half for Blackpool. Matthews wide on the right, which is where he should be. But uh, he had to cross the ball a bit better than that. There's Methvin. Morgan. Coughlin. And he tried to float one over David Felgate, and it wasn't a bad idea from Russell Coughlin. Goalkeeper straight a little bit out to his six-yard line. And uh, Coughlin just had time here, really, to look up and tried something quite ambitious. Wasn't a bad effort, was it? So half-time, with not too much to bother the goalkeepers, it doesn't look like a 4-3 today at this stage. Defenders in charge, Blackpool nil. Bolton Wanderers nil. Andy Garner perhaps had the best effort of the half. Well, there's a man who knows the road to Wembley better than most. Phil Neal, who had some uh, great days with Liverpool in England and has already taken Bolton to Wembley twice in the knockout competition for the lower divisions. Enjoying life now as a manager. So Bolton start the second half. They're involved, of course, in a long Littlewoods Cup marathon with Swindon Town at the moment, a Bolton, meeting for the fourth time. That'll be on Tuesday, unless this match is drawn, in which case the FA Cup replay takes preference on Wednesday. Two great old clubs here looking to revive their fortunes. Here's Henshaw, here's Reeves. And here's Coughlin for Blackpool. Number 10, Garner. Now Ayres. <laughs> Phyllis Kirk. And Coughlin. And now it's Brook. Matthews. And again. Was Gore, Hufflin, oh. the uh, crowd this afternoon inside Bloomfield Road is seven and a half thousand, of which um, something approaching half have come from Bolton. Forward by Cowdrill, that's uh, Gore with Phyllis Kirk, because he has been most of the afternoon. That man-to-man uh, -man marking system of Jimmy Mullins seems to be snuffing out the Bolton strikers just at the moment and it's a question of what they can do from Comstiff's throw here crossed by Thompson that's Reeves pulling away on the far side number nine Brown 
Henshaw. Brown again, it requires a cross here. They've got four in there. And the goalkeeper, McElhargy, did well. Had to backpedal, and it was swinging in from uh, right out there on the right from Phil Brown. And he'll now get involved at the corner, that's for sure, having just swerved one in there. And McElhargy did enough. So now Brown and Phyllis Kirk facing the kicker. And Morgan heads out. And Thompson. Cluster of players in there. Looked like a foul by David Reeves. He seemed to push Sean Elliott over. That's how the referee saw it anyway. Finding time to come forward a bit now, Sean Elliott from the sweeper's role. And Blackpool get the free kick. Here's Garner. This is Matthews. And again, and Methven's in there. And he knows that in a tight match that was a semblance of a chance. And Matthews appropriately got the cross in. And it was quite well delivered with his left foot. And Colin Methven is the player that comes in here to make contact. Jumping against two Bolton players, but can't keep it down. <laughs> Certainly a bit more urgency about this second half. Power drill for Bolton. Thompson's going to take this one, so Comstiff has gone near post. And Brown and Crombie far side. Oh, and the goalkeeper's lost it, and it's in! And Crombie came in there at the back, and Bolton take the lead. Dean Crombie, the number five, came right in at the far post here and the goalkeeper will be disappointed won't he it was out of his hands virtually Garner close well McElhargy really will be a little disappointed there because Bromby headed it almost from between his hands and he gives Bolton the lead in the 63rd minute Garner. It's a good run by Garner. And now Blackpool have a corner. And there's Methven. And away by Cowdrill. I think Blackpool thought that might have been a touch of handball in there. Owen flicked on and out by Win Stanley. And Elliott charged down. And Ayers, and there's a goal for Blackpool. It's David Ayers. It's 1-1 and suddenly the game has opened up and there's excitement all round the ground. It went straight through a crowd of players. And I would imagine that David Felgate might have been unsighted, but the excitement started here on the near post because when Stanley made a dramatic goal line clearance for Bolton first of all then Sean Elliott tried to find a way through it was half cleared again and now Ayers strikes it and that is 1-1 well that's really lifted the crowd here at Bloomfield Road and it's lifted Blackpool oh and Madden's through but Felgate saw the danger 20 minutes to go
This is uh, Brooke, and Matthew's in a good position here, number seven. Not a bad pullback either. And Garner! Goal! Andy Garner! It's 2-1 Blackpool. Well, suddenly, the goals are coming thick and fast. Three goals in eight minutes here. And Matthews, well, it's appropriate, I suppose, a right-wing cross from him. Craig Madden tried to lay it back. Andy Garner paused and then placed it, and David Felgate was agonisingly just a hand away from it. Here's Thompson for Bolton, and they've got to take a few chances now. Phil Neal's team, Phyllis Kirk. And Cowdrill, it came off Coughlin, corner again. This will have the Blackpool nerves fluttering a bit, especially the goalkeeper after what happened before. But the linesman wants to attract the referee's attention. There's going to be a substitution. Uh, one of the quickest players in the division, Stuart Storer, is going to come on to replace Gary Henshaw. And Crombie's in there again. a real edge to the match now it was all hustle and bustle before but now it's suddenly taken off Julian Darby with the challenge touch and Brooke Matt Madden's trying to stay on so oh. Brooke gets uh, brought down by Crombie a substitution now by Blackpool and uh, Mike Davis who is a fullback basically has come on and the man who's gone off is Matthews but uh, Neil Matthews has made his contribution by supplying the cross which brought the second goal and now Bolton are going to make a second substitution. Their number 14 is Mark Kame, who's just returned after a long spell out with a broken leg. And it may well be that uh, David Reeves, who's 22 tomorrow and uh, nearly missed this match with injury, is just slowing down a bit, so Kame takes his place. In by Elliott. Actually, Mark Kane has just come on, had a hand in a very late equaliser at Swindon in the Littlewoods Cup in the first match, a 3-3 draw. Um, he's wearing number 14, and they might be looking to him to provide such a moment again here. And there is Kane, in fact. And it took two defenders, Davis and Elliott, to shut him out. And in his first moment of action here, he wasn't too far away. Well, it was about this time that we saw on the video the goal from 1953 in stoppage time. Here's Cowdrill. Oh! <laughs> no wonder he held his head. Well, a model of Blackpool Tower being waved there by the young supporter. And the Seasiders do seem, thanks to Cowdrill's uh, slightly eccentric finish there, to be on their way into the second round. <laughs> Referee checks his watch again. We've played well into stoppage time here and uh, the Blackpool fans anxiously awaiting the final whistle and there it is Blackpool come from behind to beat Bolton as they did 36 years ago all the excitement here sandwiched into an eight-minute spell in the second half 
when Bolton took the lead and then Blackpool scored twice in four minutes. The winner coming from number 10, Andy Garner, who this morning was on the treatment table with physio Steve Redman, but uh, certainly showed no signs of any injury today. And so Blackpool go into the second round and Bolton Wanderers go out. I was a little bit disappointed with the first half uh, from our point of view because we seemed to be sat back and waiting to see what was happening. And I said to the lads at half time, I said, you know, I said, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for, for them to score or whatever? And as it happened, that's what, you know, it turned out. They've scored a, a goal from a corner and the reaction from our lads was first class because we've not only equalised, uh, but we've gone in front very quickly. You've had to live with this tradition, obviously, as, as, the, as the new manager of Blackpool. What do you think an FA Cup run can do for the club? Oh, I mean, I think from any any third division, fourth division football club point of view, uh, a run in the FA Cup has got this this um, charisma about it, really, because at the end of the day, if you get to the third round, you've got a chance to draw one of the big lads. If you don't draw one of the big lads, you get a home draw against one of the lesser teams, and you've got a chance to progress. So I think the magic of the FA Cup will always be there, as long as you've got a chance of staying in it. Well, you are at the moment on the road to Wembley. At this moment of time, yes, it seems to be that way. Yeah. Well, Jim, a, a Blackpool comeback, rather like 1953, but what did you make of the skill factor today? Well, first half, very disappointed. We didn't enjoy it that much, did we? And I think it was fear. The manager referred to it. He said that they didn't really wake up and get into the game until the second half. They were just waiting for something to happen. And I think you take the extra touch, instead of a one-touch pass and accelerating the attack, they play it the safe way have two touches and a third one and of course defences have time to cover and you get that kind of boring first half that we saw. But they certainly woke up after half time and it really was a pleasure. Maybe the manager did the trick himself. And the history of 36 years virtually repeated itself. Uh, not in quite the same way, but this is Matthews and uh, he doesn't go past his man but he works very hard to cut this ball back obliquely. A lot of work went into that pass and he knew where it was going. Madden slips back, sets it up perfectly, and Andy Garner there does a perfect dummy, and that really was a classic goal, which does credit to the one that uh, his master himself set up 36 years ago. And that was a nice piece of skill. Yeah. Now, when non-league teams meet league clubs in the cup, they're always the outsiders, or are they? Kettering of the GM Vauxhall Conference got to the fourth round last year, losing only to First Division Charlton. Today they were host to neighbouring third division outfit Northampton Town, who went out in the first round last time. Looked like an even match this one. Barry Davis is commentating. With the now 40-year-old Ernie Moss on the substitutes bench, Neil Horwood partnering Robbie Cook up front. There are seven survivors in the Kettering team compared with our last visit last December. The new names include Trevor Slack, who counts Northampton among his five league clubs, and Dominic Genovese, back from football in Sweden, who played at Wembley in the 84 Vars final for Stamford. Northampton, who come here on a run of five games without a win, will stir a few West Ham memories with Keith McPherson and Bobby Barnes, who both began their careers at Upton Park. Irving Gernon had seven and a half years with Ipswich Town, while Trevor Crow and Phil Chard both served under the now catching manager Peter Morris in their days with Peterborough. Capacity crowd of 6,100 all tickets and at least two thirds of them hoping for a continuation of the Rockingham 80s. The teams have met three times in the FA Cup before. Every time it's been Northampton who've come through and uh, the last occasion in November 1961 when a certain Cliff Holton scored a hat trick. Kettering in the red, attacking the goal to our right. Free kick given. Against Genovese. Northampton skipper with men to find. Russell Wilcox. Barnes has gone out to the right.
Lewis and wins it. This is Keast. And here's a chance for Horwood, but he missed his kick at the vital moment. Just bounced away from him at the vital moment. First chance of the match. Coming in the seventh minute. He was clear, it was a good nod that put the ball into space. But that's where he missed his kick completely. Usually disappointed because he made the gap and then couldn't exploit it. Genovese checking out. Feast. Richardson. That was a nice try. Peter Gleeser was fairly well forward. And there was quite a spin on this ball, as I think we'll see. It's coming down and had to be found away. Gleeser watching it with care. Keith is offering himself, but not used. That was an important one for McPherson to win. He won it against Slack. This is right. Good piece of play by him again. Just couldn't get himself balanced for the cross. And we've passed the quarter of an hour mark. Still no score. But the evidence so far suggesting that one won't be too long delayed. And that was an opportunity which Collins didn't take any sort of advantage of. That's better this time. Comes off Brown. Oh! Fucking Wilcox. Gannon. of Northampton, two Collins on the pitch, the other is Steve, wearing number three for Ketchum. Richardson has joined the big fellas on the far side. They all push up, well all by one to tell the truth, but the kick was too long anyway. And a mistake by Collins and they've got two men over, Barnes goes on his own. And the flag stays down. No, it doesn't. And Thomas was quite clearly offside. And Barnes perhaps should have been more aware of that. You can see we've got two players way offside here. The moment the pass is made, the flag had to go up. looked there Barnes but he didn't look later had he have gone on his own things might have been different I suppose the goalkeeper could reasonably claim that the other two were in his eye line and therefore interfering with play Cook the chase Gernon will get there first Cook doesn't need to Bobby Barnes. A line of four to his left. And that's a free header for Steve Berry. They were all watching. And Berry could certainly have made them pay. And they'd committed five players to attack then, and they were supported by two others. And they gave Steve Berry a free header. Just nobody went with him at all. Could have been embarrassing for Kettering. Steve Berry has played in the Littlewoods Cup final for Sunderland against Norwich. Feast. 
Richardson. Shouting. The person actually did awfully well then from a prostrate position. Nice <laughs> balanced little player, Richard Brown. Calm with it. Wilcox forced to turn. East. Richardson's run. No, it was out. That's the last kick of the half. Undoubtedly the best chance fell to Neil Hallward, who made his presence felt in the air, but when the opportunity came from that head for a left foot shot, sadly for him, he missed his kick. And as a result, half-time score at Rockingham Road is Kettering nil and Northampton nil. A delightful sunset marks the start of the second half. The brushwork perhaps slightly spot there by the uh, floodlight pylon. Kettering. Now playing up the slight slope here at Rockingham Road. Hallward's head in evidence immediately. Genovese is crossed, but nobody coming in from the far sides. Well, those two were much involved in the best moments that Kettering had in the first half. Right. Most of the action a year ago came in the second half. It's Cook. He caused the greatest delight. Corner. Turn off Thomas. Robbie Cook. Taking a position in the centre, number 10 there. He was the top scorer in the FA Cup last year with 11 goals in total. That's well played by Genovese. Now Andy Wright. Time for Nightingale. And that's a good start. Forward denied by a very good save. By Peter Gleeser, right down by the post. The person gives him a pat on the head in congratulations. Seemed to hang in the air, and it was a good stop. The incident coming right on the hour, and the pressure from Kettering is growing. Gleeser loses out. Another corner. And the goalkeeper obviously thought he was fouled. against the head of this fellow or the height of this fellow but in fact in the end a free kick has been given bit of push and shove yes there was an arm up definitely from Horwood that uh, impeded the goalkeeper Brown. His neck always seems to be very stiff with his headers. His whole body seems to play the ball. Oh! Right from distance by Thomas. Dean Thomas from way, way out. A real skidder along which brings to life for those who travel the 14 miles to Northampton. Had a look up. 
went for the shot, one bounce, not quite the second it was as it passed the goalkeeper. Person. Nightingale loses out the Sandiman. Just the throw, I think. Quo. Sandiman is up with him, the ball pulled behind him, here's Crow! And the follow-up, way, way over the top. Sandiman got sucked in a little bit, and Crow following up, he was challenged to be fair. And the ball going way over the stand. Slack. Edwards was down the middle, there was a player wide. <laughs> Northampton Collins just getting the better of the Kettering Collins. Still Barnes! And he missed it. Curses. Oh, he resisted the temptation to go down under the challenge. Seemed totally confident of being able to finish. He was pressurised there by Brown. And there was a little bit of a flick from Brown too. But in the end, Barnes had been forced too wide. Collins and still no one to put it back to and then Barnes and they can't believe it there's the manager Graham Carr all it needed was the touch and Barnes gave it the venom and Crow won it not a repeat this time Graham Carr's team make sure of that and maintains the long-term history of always beating Kettering in the cup. The one goal coming from this man, Dean Thomas. It was a little speculative, but it found the net. An easier opportunity, which Hallward created for himself in the first half when Kettering were on top. He didn't take, leaving Thomas to bounce away with the lights and Kettering to concentrate on the lead. In their case, the GM Vauxhall Conference. Well, just one goal, Jim. By heavens, there were some missed chances in that one, though. There were indeed. I mean, Kettering had the first half and might easily have taken the lead and won the match, but uh, they got the disease, and then Northampton, once they'd scored their goal, they caught it. And, and what a way. I mean, Darren Collins was doing his best to get him. <laughs> He's going like an express train there for the near post. Cuts it back beautifully. And Trevor Quo. You, he wouldn't be so unsporting to score against a non-league club, even with a chance like that. And here's your man again, Collins into the byline, cuts it back, and this time it's Bobby Barnes's turn. Whacking it over the top to bring such frustration to the management team of Northampton Town. Look at it. It's devastating. You saw it. Look. Oh, how they're suffering. And bear in mind, Graham Carr's in the hat. <laughs> <laughs> For the next round. <laughs> Not much hair left eh? for either of them either. <laughs> Well, you'll no doubt recall that Sutton United were the other non-league side to get to the fourth round of the Cup last time. Today, they were up against Torquay, setting out, hopefully, for another great run. And golly, and Reigns, and a goal!
Here's Dawson. Oh, and driven in! And number 11, Matthew Hanlon, followed that in. After Barry Williams on Sutton United became national news by beating Coventry in last season's third round, Norwich City performed a clinical exercise in deflation in the fourth. For Robert Fleck. Will it be number six for Norwich City? The answer to both is yes. By the end, it was 8 0. Yet Sutton never lost their dignity or their sense of sportsmanship, even in that defeat. They earned their standing ovation at the end for all the best reasons. Today, the boardroom at Gander Green Lane bears witness to the friends Sutton made at Norwich and to the good impression they made on their bank balance at the end of the run. Now the club have a new manager, Keith Blunt, here on the left, greeting Dave Smith, his opposite number from Torquay. Their strip remains the familiar yellow. Dawson, and ball, but uh, uh, no point in blowing there at all. And that's a good ball from Hanlon. And the shot well saved by Vizi was from Massey. Keeper made a quick decision there and he may have made the wrong one. Kicked off the line by Dawson from Airy. Well, Sullivan came, nicked the ball away, but it only went as far as Airy. And Airy's shot was very deliberate, but Dawson was there to clear. Cleared by Holmes. A back by Reigns, then a flick from Hawkins. Hawkins again. There's Davis. And this is all very untidy. All going from side to side, but now Massey. McKinnon! Beautiful! You won't see a better cross, nor a better header, in the first round of the FA Cup. That was superbly done, and it's 1-0 to Sutton United. After a very untidy passage of play, Stuart Massey got away, whipped in the low cross, and Paul McKinnon's header gave him his ninth goal of the season. Edwards, Giselle. Irons made a good run into the box here. He's won a corner and he deserved maybe more. It was a very good run indeed. And when he burst between the two defenders, it threatened all kinds of trouble for Sutton. But Hiron suddenly, with that uh, tricky, jinking sidestep of his, has started to create a few doubts in the minds of the Sutton defenders on this right flank. This time he hits the corner very deep and long towards Azel. Azel shot! John Ozell has put the fourth division side on terms. The corner hit very, very deep. Ozell controlled it and hit it well back across Sullivan. And that's his first goal for 18 months. Replay on Wednesday evening at Plainmoor. Now, the last league team to visit Macclesfield in the FA Cup were Rotherham in 1987. They got hammered 4-0 and Macclesfield decided to remind today's visitors, Chester, of that fact. Macclesfield in the blue, Tony Gubber is reporting. Well, somewhere behind that pylon is the Macclesfield left-back, Paul Johnson. Nicely back to Hanlon! Oh, hit the post! And again! Twice! Burr with the second one. Oh, what a let-off for the league team. Hamilton with the free kick. Well, that's come all the way to Croft. Oh, he did well. It's in. Robert Painter. And Macclesfield can look among the defence and wonder what went wrong. It was a long ball hit from the back by Hamilton. Somehow it got past two Macclesfield men. It picked up Croft. His shot was saved. Dale couldn't get on the end, but Painter did. What a disappointment for Alan Zealand. Thought he had it. 
and then he hadn't. Floodlights on in the second half. As Macclesfield try to come forward through Ellis. Askey got there, that's a good ball to find Burr, but he's only got one to look for in the middle. The defender got a foot, so Macclesfield start the second half with a corner. And that's come out to Farrelly, the right back. Chipped up, no offside, Edwards! Well, the Macclesfield captain, Elfin Edwards, number four, had stayed up for the corner. And Marcusville almost getting the equaliser right at the start of the second half. Croft. Painter to Lane. It just caught the back of his heels and the Chester skipper was a bit unfortunate there. Ellis keeps his balance. He might have done better to have given it to Timmins. And that's perhaps the first moment of uncertainty that Chester have shown in this second half. Billy Stewart, the Chester goalkeeper, in no great hurry to take this kick. Just about five minutes left. Good jump by Tobin. And a good ball to find Ellis. Now Askey, here's the chance. Oh, he struck it so well, didn't he, John Askey? It just curled away from that near post. Painter, the goal scorer. Eight is Pew. We've played 90 minutes. And Alan Zellum releases that really quickly to find Timmins and now Burr. This is time that the referee has added on for stoppages. The route to the keeper's cut off. Chester will have had the signal from the bench. Hanlon. Farrelly. Well, he didn't really look, but he found Askey, who kept his balance. That'll be Macclesfield's ball. Johnson, the left back, has gone right over to that right-hand corner flag to take this. We're into stoppage time. And Johnson can retrieve it and pump it straight back. Oh, and he's fallen for Burr! A chance of glory! What a brilliant finish! Moss Rose erupts. We've played 90 minutes. It's time for stoppages. And Steve Burr, who got the hat-trick against Rotherham, has come from nowhere to make it one apiece. Another replay, this time on Tuesday. Well, now the other main cup stories of the day, beginning with the biggest upset. Jerry Sidstadt reporting. Aylesbury United, in the green and white hoops, produced the performance of the round against fourth division leaders South End. Goalless for 80 minutes until this Glenn Donegal header. Donegal, who's 20, cost a club record fee of £15,000 from Northampton a few weeks ago. It was the kind of goal that deserves to win a cup tie, and it takes Aylesbury manager Trevor Gould one step nearer to going into the draw with brother Bobby's Wimbledon. Whitley Bay of the HFS Homes League in the Stripes were away to 4th Division Scarborough, and thanks to Chris Scott's superb header, progressed another stage along the road to Wembley. While the non-league side celebrated, Scarborough's fans demonstrated how quickly they'd become disenchanted with the side they were acclaiming as conquerors of Chelsea only last month. Peterborough have done enough giant killing in the past to be wary of non-league opponents. They're in the blue shirts, while Sterling gave them the lead against Hayes. Sterling's goal came a minute before half-time and it left Sterling with some bruises to show for his efforts, but it didn't dent the resilience of the Vauxhall Isthmian League side. Though it did take a wild challenge by goalkeeper Paul Crichton on Darren Seabrook to open the way for Hayes' equaliser. Paul Barracliffe scored the penalty. The replay is on Tuesday. Not such a good day for the Vauxhall Conference Clubs. Kidderminster Harriers, red and white halves, for a goal down to Swansea in the second minute. The scorer, Andy Melvin. It's been a good week for the Swansea defender. On Wednesday in Cologne, he won his first cap for Wales. Here, he scored again in the 18th minute.
that's how it stayed for most of the next three quarters of an hour, until Richard Forsyth raised Kidderminster hopes. <laughs> 2 1. And when Swansea seemed to have cleared a corner only a couple of minutes later, Paul Bancroft unleashed a left foot shot that was sweet, true, and unstoppable. 2 all. But the celebrations proved premature. Swansea rallied, and Simon Davy claimed the decisive touch as the Welsh Cup holders made sure of a continuing interest in the English Cup. Stafford Rangers, in the stripes, had their kickoff delayed to get all the fans in, but they wasted no time taking the lead against Halifax. Chris Camden scored from the penalty spot after only seven minutes. That held until just before half-time when Halifax produced a flowing move that culminated with Paul Fleming at the far post. In the second half, there was another penalty. Chris Camden was brought down, or did he fall? Anyway, it gave him a chance to score his second of the match. Last season, Camden also scored twice when Stafford drew with Crewe in the first round. Their lead lasted here until the last ten minutes. Then, Phil Horner struck twice. That was the first. And the second came four minutes later. They were Horner's first ever goals in the FA Cup and they take Halifax into round two. Telford in white were one down to Walsall Stuart Rimmer after only 23 minutes. The third division side produced two more in the last five minutes. Keith Birchin, and then in the last 60 seconds, Graham Forbes. This inflicted the first FA Cup home defeat on Telford by a league club for 20 years. Incidentally, Welling tell us that their cup replay against Gillingham on Wednesday night will be an all-ticket match. And, of course, Fulham are at Bath tomorrow, Jim. Tough one, that, Des. It will be. Right, the draw for the second round is on Monday. Wednesday's sports night will include replay highlights. Match of the day returns in three weeks' time with the second round, when we'll also have the third round draw live and the review of the day's World Cup draw. That's December the 9th. Well, today a little cup history repeated itself. Matthews in a number seven shirt for Blackpool against Bolton. It evoked memories galore. We'll have many more for you on the road to Wembley this season. Good night from us. <laughs>